imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the State of Greater Western New York Report. Join us each episode as we discuss fantastic topics ranging from history to science to the strange and the wonderful, as well as the treasured spirit with which our region has infused America. We challenge you to consider all things Greater Western New York, from our region's very beginnings to how it inspires, how it empowers, and why it is so admired. Here's the host of the State of Greater Western New York Report, Chris Carosa. <laughs> hey, how'd you like the way that thing came out? Welcome, everyone, again to another wonderful week in wonderful Western New York. We're, we'll be talking about some very interesting topics today, a little bit about history, maybe some history that they didn't teach you in school, but they should have. Let's get on right away. We're going to talk about the history of the origin of the 17 counties very quickly, just for an overview because we've got a special guest today who's going to be talking about a bicentennial celebration for one of those counties. Here's a hint. Three counties have bicentennial years this year. So let's start with the state of Greater Western New York in 1771. That's right, 1771. This is before the Revolutionary War, when New York was still a colony, and pretty much nobody lived here. As we travel back in time to 1771, William Tryon was the governor of the colony of Greater New York, of all of New York, I should say. He was the governor also of North Carolina prior to being, being the governor of New York. This is what the state of Greater West New York looked like in 1771. We might add that there was no colony here. In fact, this is the colony of New York. This is the counties within the colony of New York Colony. You can see it included what is now Vermont, most of Albany, and New York and Long Island. That's pretty much it. In 1772, however, a new colony was added, and guess what the name of it was? It was Tryon County. Tryon County extended from roughly Albany all the way through the western extent of New York Colony. Now, we didn't really know where the western extent was, even though there's a line drawn here. People just weren't sure, so it was just said, well, it went on for wherever New York ended. Now, in 1783, it was determined that New York State at that time ended pretty much at the shores of Lake Erie. Now, this graphic here is a little off because it did extend that little corner where the Erie, Pennsylvania is. It did extend through that. That was later given to Pennsylvania. But notice something that's missing here. The state of Vermont is no longer part of the colony of New York. Vermont split off in 1777 to become in its own independent nation, not a state. That's one, why it wasn't one of the original 13 states. At that time, it was its own independent nation. So this is 1783. Now, who is this William Tryon guy? Well, before we get into that, we should know a little bit more about what he did and how he did it. So William Tryon, again, the governor of New York Colony, was pretty successful as a governor of North Carolina. They still respect him for that. He was governor there for a long time, yeah, maybe six years. In 1776, during the Revolutionary War, Tryon and New York City Mayor David Matthews tried to kidnap George Washington. And they, they, they messed up the whole thing. One of Washington's insiders was identified as a traitor, later hung. They did want to go after Tryon, but George Washington said basically, no, leave him alone. So Tryon kind of left that idea during the revolution and went back to being, a, you know, sort of like a, a, a kind of a official general that he was. But here's the thing. Tryon liked to attack civilian targets. General Henry Clinton of the British Army repeatedly turned down Tryon's proposals to do that. However, in 1779, in July of 1779, he took over a series of raids 
in the Connecticut towns of New Haven, Fairfield, and Norwalk, and basically burned the whole thing down, at least for Fairfield and Norwalk. The Americans condemned him. They called him a, a person who made war on, quote, women and children. And even the British commander, Clinton, also uh, was indignant of Tryon for disobeying his orders. So Tryon was not a very worthy individual, and in 1784, this entire Tryon County was renamed for Richard Montgomery. Yes, Richard Montgomery. Now, you might not recognize this picture, but you probably do know who Richard Montgomery was. He was initially an Irish, Schultz, an Irish soldier, I could say that, can I? Um, who was first served in the British Army, but when the American Revolution broke out, he joined the Patriots. He was elected to the New York Provincial Congress in May of 1775, and in June of 1775, he was commissioned as a Brigadier General in the Continental Army. Now, Philip Schuyler was the head of that army, but he became too ill to lead the invasion of Canada, so Montgomery was was put in his place. Montgomery went on to capture Fort St. John's and then Montreal in November of 1775, and eventually he advanced to Quebec City. However, on December 31st, 1775, as he was leading attack on that city, he was killed during the battle. The British later found his body, gave him an honorable burial, but this is probably the picture that you will recognize when it comes to Richard Montgomery. This is the death of General Montgomery in the attack on Quebec, December 7, 31st, 1775. It's an oil painting from 1786 done by the American artist John Trumbull. It hangs at Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut, which sorts of brings us back to the, the trying connection there. So that's probably where you remember him most. In 1789, Montgomery County was split. And this is really the beginning of the greater Western New York region. This, count, this county here is Ontario County. That's the original Ontario County. It came about in January of 1789. Now, now Ontario County was organized a few years later, but still, this is the start date. That line there, if you notice, that line is a little bit to the east of the previous line of Tryon County. So that line, the new line here, this new line, is called Preemption Line, and that came about as a result of the Treaty of Hartford, which was signed on December 16th, 1786. So if you want to have a birthday party for the greater Western New York region, you would do it on December 16th, which also happens to be Beethoven's birthday, in case you're wondering. So from Ontario County spawned forth all of our other counties beginning in 1796 with the county of Steuben. And then, you know, here's the other thing that you might want to see. See that straight line, preemption line? It didn't stay the boundary of Greater West New York. Why? Because there was trading back and forth between counties. In this case, Cayuga County gave some land to Ontario County, so the line starts to get a little crooked. In 1802, Genesee County was created. Now, it wasn't fully organized until 1803, but Genesee County was the big county, the next big county. In, 17, in 1804, I should say, uh, Seneca County was created from Cayuga County. In 1806, Allegheny County was created from Genesee. And then in 1808, another interesting thing happened. Niagara County was created and formed. Also, Chautauqua and Cattaraugus County were created, but they fell under the jurisdiction of Niagara County for several years. Chautauqua didn't fully become organized until 1811, and it wasn't until 1817 that Cattaraugus County was fully detached and became its own county. Now, the purpose of today is 1821. Three counties were formed at that point, Monroe and Livingston, out of Ontario and portions of Genesee County, but also Erie County was formed out of Niagara County. This is all in 1821. In 1823, Yates County was created 
and that came out of parts of Ontario County. In 1823, we had Wayne County coming out of both Ontario and Seneca. And in 1825, we have Orleans County. From, I'm sorry, before that, in, uh, in 1825, a, a month or so before, we had a trade between Livingston County and Monroe County, where when Monroe got a little bit more from Livingston County. Then a month later, we had Orleans County coming out of Ontario, I'm sorry, out of Genesee. Uh, in, it wasn't until a decade later, in 1836, that Chemung County was created mostly from Tioga County. And in 1841, we had Wyoming County coming out of Genesee County. Finally, the last county to be created was Shiler County, and that came out of Chemung, Steuben, and Tompkins County to form what is now, to the most extent, the 17 counties of the greater western New York region. Today, we'll be focusing on one of those counties, Livingston County, who celebrated its bicentennial a few weeks ago and will continue to celebrate throughout the year. Historian of Livingston County, Amy Hello. Eldon. Hi, Amy. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great today. Thank you. How are you? Good. Well, let's start off with uh, just a couple of quick notes about the very, very beginnings of Livingston County. Can you maybe give us a flavor for what prompted the county to be created and maybe who, if there were any major characters, or even where did the name Livingston come from? Uh, well, to start with that one, uh, our county was named in honor of um, Robert R. Livingston, who was the chancellor for the state of New York. He never resided in Livingston County, but he was um, a revered uh, uh, person in, in American history. And so um, when they decided to form Livingston County, they, that's the person they chose. So, so when we, we have the name of Livingston County, but what maybe prompted them to start the county? What, was it a growth of population? Yeah, from what I remember in the history books, Livingston County was sort of like in the middle of everything. And it was yeah. maybe perhaps recognizing that that prompted people to create their own county. Yeah, it was um, the Wadsworth family who was the prominent um, pioneers and and um, of this of this whole area. James and William Wadsworth um, had vast land holdings, and um, it was a long distance to travel uh, between to Canandaigua to record a deed um, on the eastern um, side of Livingston County or to drive or to ride all the way to Batavia in Genesee County to record a deed. So I think it was in their interest and political interest as well to have their own representation uh, for Livingston County and the convenience of having the county seat um, much closer to where they own property. Excellent. And where the uh, population growth had, had occurred. Well, before we get to the break and start talking about some bicentennial activities, can you maybe share with us some famous names people might recognize who who were in Livingston County or did things in Livingston County? Yeah, a lot of a lot of familiar names in American history. Um, one of the earliest that people, uh, students especially, might recognize is Daniel Shays. Uh, the leader of Shays Rebellion. He came here uh, uh, to settle and live a quiet life at the end of his life. Uh, Clara Barton uh, came here after the Civil War to recuperate at the Jackson Sanitarium. And she she was so enamored with this place that she, um, she established a home here and um, the first chapter of the American Red Cross. Uh, Francis Bellamy, uh, who the author of the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, was born in in Livingston County. The author of the original Pledge of Allegiance before some um, changes to the um, uh, allegiance was made to the pledge was made. Um, 
Someone not as familiar might be Seth Green, a Rochester native who um, was one of the first in the country to uh, experiment with fish, um, artificial fish propagation. And so the oldest fish hatchery in the country, and they claim the oldest in the Western Hemisphere was established here, in addition to William Pryor Letchworth and one of the one of the um, most uh, visited places in our area is Letchworth State Park. So ah. he, had a, he had a vast history in addition to his, um, his, his uh, donating of the park upon his death. The famous Grand Canyon of the East. Yes. So why don't we, why don't we take a, a short break here? We'll be right okay. back with more words from Amy and the Bicentennial of Livingston County. Stay with us. Through the mists of time, nature and man have both created and buried treasures beyond the imagination. With the ages, these riches slowly dissolve into mere myths until they are forever forgotten. But there are those brave souls who tirelessly cling to the truth, ever seeking to discover the undiscovered, to reveal what has always been there, to uncover the hidden gems of a land thought forsaken, but loved by millions. Fifty Hidden Gems of Greater Western New York. Discover the secrets in your own backyard. Buy your copy now at 50hiddengems.com. Well, welcome back, everyone. And with us is Amy Alden, the historian from Livingston County, who is celebrating, not Amy, well, I guess Amy's celebrating too, but it's the entire <laughs> county that's celebrating its 200th anniversary of its founding yes. on February 23rd, 1821. So mm -hmm. let, let's just talk about how you kicked off things. I was there when you, uh, when you had this huge virtual event and you had people from all over wishing Livingston County a happy birthday. Tell us a little bit, actually here's, I think this is an interesting story. I mean, I, I talked about this earlier. It's an interesting story of how this celebration changed given all the events that were happening. So tell us a little bit about that first. Well, when I've been planning this event for several years and I felt it was really important to, you know, think long and hard and talk with, you know, various stakeholders and get all this input on what we could do and how we could make this year special. We didn't plan to have a, a global pandemic in the midst of, of um, the the bicentennial so that changed everything like it's changed all aspects of our lives everywhere uh so um you know towards the end of 2020 when i was still hoping we could gather uh have groups gather together um in one place that it became very apparent that that wasn't going to happen so i had to think again on how we can make this uh, a memorable and meaningful uh, kickoff ceremony and um, focus on the year as a whole uh, to broaden the experience uh, for, for those um, in the outer reaches of our county and, and beyond so everybody could participate. I know, and it was uh, very well participated. It was a it was a pretty wonderful event, considering oh, it was you. virtual. Uh, but I thought mm -hmm. a lot of people had good things to say. It was great the way you got people who reside in the county to recognize what's going on. One of the things that I've learned just in talking about the history of our region is people are fascinated by it when they become aware of it, and it's it's yes. you know everyday life just makes it really hard for people to kind of capture what's going on. So it's historians like you, the various historical societies, which continually provide this 
information in this in this avenue. I think it's appreciated by a lot of people. So tell us, what are some of the events that you've got cooked up uh, for this year to celebrate the Bicentennial? <laughs> well, we're going to continue in this virtual mode. Um, we um, are uh, going to have several um, tours. And I have, for several years, I have um, had uh, worked to expand an on sell audio heritage tour. So I have ser several different um, tours throughout the out the county museums and landmarks and we have a women's history trail so we'll be continuing to to expand that and that link is on our website i'll talk a little bit about that later i'm going to have three um historical marker dedications um throughout the year um we were launching a geocaching trail a bicentennial geocaching trail and that will encompass the entire county um for all those that um are involved in geocaching they they are so excited and so i think it will draw families and others into um this to experience it for the first time so one of the things i'm i'm really excited about is we're going to be um, putting together a classic uh, car tour uh, that will wind through the entire county um, in August. And uh, that will involve, I'm told, we may have as many as 75 cars that um, it will be quite uh, an event. And so typical of, um, uh, of what we've all seen throughout this past year to to commemorate events. And we're going to have a tree planting um, a day. We're going to have um, another thing I'm really, I'm excited about everything, but another thing I'm really excited about is the fact that um, uh, me, um, myself, and my deputy historian are going to be launching a women's biographical review book a uh, publication featuring 200 uh, women and um, their their uh, uh, review of their of their lives throughout um, all the eras in in Livingston County history and that will come out in the fall and we'll wind up the year with the typical you know time capsule and hopefully um, some of these events will we will be able to safely gather with people and 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 those that want to celebrate and commemorate with us. I'm interested in the the work that you're doing on the 200 women. How do you get your source information for that, especially going far back? That's really where I'm interested. In. How when you go far? How far back did you go? Let's start with that. Well, we go back to um, Native American um, era um, of, you know, we, we, um, it, it is tough, it, you know, documenting women's history, I think for, for so long um, was never done. And then it's, it's still fairly recent where um, women's history is even sort of acknowledged as, as a separate uh, subject and one um, that deserves more attention and, and research, but we dig. It, 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 you know, we dig and dig and dig, and we've had a lot of input from people in the community. We reached out to, to people from uh, our, our community and beyond to, um, uh, you know, provide information on people that are women that they thought um, had done we the subtitle is achievers leaders and role models but what i want to do is include women from all walks of life not just the ones that have achieved something you know so extraordinary but ordinary women in um that have been able to um uh th that are trailblazers in their own right, right. so it'll be a variety right. Are you are you sharing this information ultimately with the uh, Seneca County uh, Women's Museum or? Uh... Well, the book will be available, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we will probably also feature um, a lot on our website. That's something that I really felt as a public historian that providing information online is the best way to disseminate information to the public so, and so we're not in the book you know we're not writing a book to make money um right. you know 
we're writing a book to share what we have, um, the research that we have done, and to honor Anna and um, the legacy of, of women and all the other all the other local history subjects that you know we've we've researched over the years. So, I know you wanted to mention more about the website. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, what it is, maybe how people can get to it, and uh, things like that. Well, um, I am. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank the uh, the county Livingston County Board of Supervisors for all their support. Livingston County is one of the few counties in the state that has a dedicated full time historian. I, I wear no other hats um, with a with a research um, center, and we are a separate county department. So we're we have resources that a lot of county historians don't have available to them. Um, so we have a, a website. It's if you go to livingstoncounty.us and click on departments and um, county historian, you can explore the types of um, services we provide. And we provide services at no charge um, because the vast majority of our um, Primary um, uh, sources are, have been digitized. I shouldn't say the vast majority. A huge amount of our primary sources have been digitized, and um, we we share them um, readily readily with anybody. We also that's where you can link to our on sale audio tours. You can um, find out. Um, you can submit research requests. We have this wonderful um, search engine that you can uh, put in names or you can put in war or you can put in a town. And I think up right now we have almost um, a half a million entries in there, which, oh my gosh, that that just still blows my mind when I think about it. But it's it's a huge resources and, and genealogists especially have really appreciated um, that, uh, that um, particular um, database. So, and much, much more. All this stuff on what's happening with the with the bicentennial. We do. It, one of my priorities is to keep the website current. Um, I want to. Uh, I don't like going onto a website and seeing something that is outdated um, myself. So I I try to make sure that our our website is is kept up to date. We have time for another. One more question, and uh, we have a couple more minutes left, actually. I'm sort of curious. You probably talk to a lot of people about history in Livingston County or about Livingston County. What are some of the topics that people ask you the most about when it comes to Livingston County history? Um, besides, besides genealogy, people are very interested in their house histories. Um, that that is the second most common topic asked about, um, it, it, and they also ask about uh, local landmarks uh, every day. I mean, just before I did, I started this interview. I got a phone call from a person who was looking for pictures of uh, photographs of a fire that occurred on Main Street in Geneseo in 1972, and we just so happened to have a whole slew of them. So events, historic, uh, or just sites. Um, we get every kind of question imaginable. You know, people preface the, uh, on the phone, they'll say, well, I've got a really weird question. We're, we're, we're very, very used to weird questions. <laughs> so I feel like we're really um, in an uh, important um, facility to um, to uh, to answer those kind of questions because where else are you going to go? I mean, a library's great; they're all my best friends, and uh, and other county historians. We we really do um, dig um, for uh, for information and try to answer as much as we possibly can. Now we can't answer everything, <laughs> and um, oftentimes we're stumped, and but that provokes us to to uh dig deeper can't answer everything actually so i'm going to ask you one last quick question oh no this it's is, not a hard one <laughs> no it's an easy one because it's it's okay. kind of like it's something so you can't answer every question because you can't go back in time 
and find out the answer, the definitive answer. So let's ask this question of you. If you could go back in time, any time in Livingston County history, where would you go? Where would I go? Yeah. I. I any time in, in, in Livingston County history. Any time in Livingston would, County history. I grew up in Geneseo. Geneseo is where my heart is. I would have loved to go back to the early 1900s um, and uh, live through to see uh, women, the 19th Amendment pass. Mm. Uh, that's, that is the era of, um, that attracts me the most. And the um, just the fact that women worked so hard and for so long, and the pioneers um, in w the women's rights movement didn't get to see um, the, um, their work come to fruition. Um, but yes, that that early 1900s Geneseo. That's I I can't imagine wanting to be anywhere else. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Amy. Thank you for showing up on our show. And uh, perhaps we'll have you back a little later, maybe to talk about Daniel Shays or Clara Barton or some other sure. history, Francis Bellamy, you know, all these interesting characters that lived in Livingston County. Thank you again. And thank everyone for watching today's show. It, once again, this is the State of Greater Western New York, New York Report. And I'm Chris Carosa, and we'll be seeing you next week. Bye-bye for now.